Hello, everyone. We're here. It's Saturday night. Time to talk about anime. How you guys doing? Indeed. It's freshly shaved. <laughs> no kidding. I miss having a beard. You're saying it's, it's uh, Mafia personality, baby face John. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you have phantom beard? Do you, like, periodically? I. It's right. You get to a point with a beard where you lay down on a pillow and it stops being in your mouth. <laughs> so that it becomes like literally like laying on a small furry animal. Mm. So it's just it's kind of like <laughs> it's like a pelt stuck to your face. Mm. And it's comfortable. So that's then, what Kimba feels like when you're sleeping with a dad's Yeah, butt. exactly. Exactly. Mm, exactly. Okay. And then when you shave, yeah, yeah. it becomes like <laughs> Velcro. So that when you try to move your face on the pillowcase, <laughs> the pillowcase goes with it. <laughs> like <laughs> I'd forgotten this in like eight months. <laughs> um, very different. It's very cooling for this oh, lovely yeah. weather. I imagine. That is that yes. is quite nice. Um, I had a, a co-worker who would uh, uh, wear the beard out in the winter and then shave back up in the summer yeah. to be you know, yep. cool. Yep. You know? Yeah, there's nothing worse than like sweat bead running off your bald mm -hmm. head then hitting the first of the beard section mm -hmm. and then going pachinko on you. Oh, Where is it going to land? Yeah, pretty much. And then you just end up sitting there like a dog scratching. Mm -hmm. People look at you like, are you okay? <laughs> like, ah, just do it fine. I'm okay. Just mange. I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> Damn fleas. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, uh, Fleas on animals. Um, let's get started. <laughs> That's a good segue. Hey, you know, I do what I can. So let's talk about Jinro. Now that we're all happy and upbeat, let's discuss uh, Jinro, a, uh, a movie that's uh, not exactly a comedy. Um, uh, and so... I don't know where to start with this. Um, so we, we normally we normally discuss kind of our, our exposure. I've seen this years and years ago. It's one of those. Oh, you should totally see Jinro. Watch Jinro. Typical for um, this kind of a thing. I'm not like a huge. I was typically not a huge um, Mamoru Oshii fan initially. Just didn't get it. Um, and so I was like, okay, it's kind of interesting, but I don't like the pace and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I've since come around. Um, so watching it this time, I was like, ah, I see what they're doing. I understand the kind of the symbolism and the, the, um, the, the deliberately slow pace. Um, yeah. So definitely glad I came back to it. How about you guys? Well, uh, years and years ago, this probably would have been, um, actually 2004, I think. Oh, wow. Um, I was working at, at the IMAX here at the, um, Science Center, mm -hmm. Maryland Science Center. And a guy I was working with was also a fan of anime. And he and I, in between, you know, the IMAX movies, I think it was between uh, IMAX Beavers and IMAX Bears, I, I forget what it was, but he and I were having this contest of, like, who could name, like, the most depressing anime without talking about, you know, the, the uh, most famous uh, one. So that one was verboten. So we, 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 we couldn't talk about Grave of the Fireflies. So we, you know, <laughs> we're bringing up all these other ones and he brought up Jinro and I had never heard of it. Mm. And so he described it for me. So I decided to watch it. And um, it was really, I found it really, really very interesting. Like when it, when I first watched the trailer, I was just like, okay, you know, is this like a, a, a 50s, 60s where Japan and Germany are friends yeah. now is the way that it, that yeah. it presents itself at first. Mm -hmm. And hey, they you know, were allies during the war. Uh, right, were, right, yeah. <laughs> but, but I was like, but I thought it was like they won the war or something like that. Mm -hmm. And But anyway, so I, so I watched it and I was like, oh, it's more about the, okay, yeah. the social upheaval after the occupation mm -hmm. running into yeah. the 60s. And, and I just remember... Um, when I was watching watching it, just uh, first of all, I became entranced by the idea of fi late fifties, early sixties Tokyo, yeah, and the way that that looked, which is so oh. radically different, and the fact that he captured. If you ever look at historical pictures of that time period, they really captured it. Oh, perfectly, yeah, yeah. You know, so I was like, I, so the the historian in me, the OCD historian in me, was very happy mm -hmm. um, in, in that type of thing. So then over the years, of course, you know, I bought a copy of it. And so periodically we'd go back to it. Um, and uh, then I stopped watching it for a long time. And then I came across this AMV based on the song uh, Panzer Mensch. Oh, okay. Is a, uh, yeah, this is a German, um, kind of like Rammstein. Okay. Yeah, um, okay. You know, kind of, kind of music. And it was just 
all that, mm. you know, all, 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 you know, the, all the, all this, all the action that goes on in, in, in mm. this uh, anime. And I was just like, oh my God, this is so cool. I got to watch it again. So, you know. <laughs> Word, then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and then months ago when we decided to do, started doing all this stuff, remember what I kept saying over and over again, let's throw Chinro. Yeah. And like, no. <laughs> hey, I didn't say no. I just said Jin who? <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a it's it's a, it's a, it's um I would have to say it's probably in my top 20. Mm, mm-hmm. Definitely. I can see why. Yeah. John I've had you? this I've had this on the list for eons and I don't mm-hmm. remember whether Brent you had said something about it or where I ran across it before. Phil. I, I, this seems like a film. I don't know. I don't think no? so. Interesting. I went when well, I went and watched it, and then I flipped into my anime list to mm. like update my, and it was on plan to watch. Okay. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I must have run across this somewhere and been mm. like, oh, okay, this is you know, an impressive film, and I should you know, put mm. this on the list to get to it, and I hadn't until now. Here we go. Um, <laughs> and <Yeah>. boy. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's interesting a, concepts. You know, it's a ray of sunshine. Absolutely. I mean, it is a film that starts with, you know, the atomic bombing. Yeah. Um, you know, that's like <laughs> literally the opening image of this film after some, some text. Um, and, and then segues into Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Pretty much. So let's talk about this. One of the interesting things about Jin Rose is it's basically alternate history. Um, yeah. Um, so... For those who've watched the film, um, there really is, and spoilers, there really is, um, or there really was a lot of political unrest in the 60s and later in the 70s in Japan. So this is very much based on that. Um, and basically, what if the um, response from the Japanese government was much more severe to create this special right. unit? And as I'm sure there were calls at the time to you know, ramp up police response, um, you know, what if that happened? Um, and this is, you know, what happens when you have a right. paramilitary force as your capital police. Um, and they and go a- and buy German equipment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the natural answer so, every time. Right. <laughs> like, so I, I, I haven't found out. So th- these, this is based on, a, 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 I think, a series of novels, light novels by yeah. Moro Oshii, right. um, who provided the um, like story structure for the movie. So you basically said, here's how I would slice this down for a movie. Um, and then apparently Satoshi Kon came in and was involved on kind of structuring it and figuring out how to do all the various layers. But I'm, I don't know whether, um, I mean, I assume the, the implication is that they got all this stuff from Germany and imported it into Japan. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it's... <laughs> yeah, absolutely no way. It could have really be any kind of other way well, because they make it kind of clear in the in the film. Like you saw that one still image where there's a U.S. occupation serviceman, right? That is, right. That is kind of sitting down on street level with somebody. It's like, okay, the occupation went on for you know enough years that in our timeline, that's sort of settled out how the hawks and doves worked out with the diet in Japan, and you know. Right. Instituting the new elements of the Constitution, you know, thanks to MacArthur Um, and getting stuff kind of coordinated. It's like you didn't have the Japanese military industrial complex produce that number of armored cars. You didn't have them copying over things like the MG-34, the FG-42, the C-96 Mauser, the P-38, the Mauser itself. Uh, You know, I can... I went through it. At I some was point, I'm just like you. nerding it up. I'm like, oh, what's that weapon? Yeah. I was, I, I, I was that too. Oh yeah, I was totally thinking of you, John, when, when I was watching this again. Because you know, now that I know somebody who does, who knows about this kind of stuff, yeah. And you know, just like you know, like also at the end of it, you know, noting the 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 rifle stock attachment mm. for yeah. for for that you know for for the handgun, so that you know whatever. But you know, one of the and things the that room the... handled C ninety six Mauser. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> See, he and the fact that this. people are are wandering down a, a, a 
sewer and they have STG 44. <laughs> so I'm like, I know. what are you doing to me? This yeah. Is cool. <laughs> so, uh, in so, addition to the MG 42, just, you know, it's just, I know that, wow. that's just, can I, can I ask what those things are? <laughs> oh yeah, um, the STG is the thing that looks has a banana clip that looks like okay. an AK forty seven kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's not an AK. It's an STG no, forty four, which yeah. is a, a a mid to late war German uh, assault rifle. Okay, actually, if Storm you watch Gewehr assault weapon, if you watch uh, Fury, the tank movie that was out recently. Okay. Um, yeah. um, uh, what's his name? Brad Pitt's character actually sports one that cool. he lifted off of yeah. a Nazi. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, um, and then the forty-two is the the uh, constable Fuse, his big machine gun is thing, it. is and yeah. and I mean this is like as Did much you as the, see those bullets. Well, <laughs> see, as, well they're eight millimeter oh, full sized geez. rounds, which is just yeah. devastating weapon. Yeah. Um, but if you if you're looking at this beyond the the actual storyline mm -hmm. this is like a love letter to like german manufactured weapons oh yeah like, absolutely oh, yeah <laughs> so so in in i don't know all if you the way guys down watched... to the changing the barrel barrel mm -hmm. on the yeah. fg42 when he's doing a cleaning regimen it's yeah. like mm -hmm. you could have just left that out that was not important oh, no. it was not not a a kid a critical thing a key issue to the mm -hmm. film and yet you have it putting the thing back, locking it back into the, into yeah, the carrier. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, wow. <laughs> so yep. so one of the things about this movie, particularly with the weaponry, I don't know if you guys watched mm. the credits, towards the credits at mm. the end. You know, they talked about the, the, the gun model company, and then there was CATS, which is a combat mm. action um, where they teach people how to use weapons for uh, entertainment. Oh, okay. So oh. CATS, so what CATS did is they brought out the animators and gave them weapons the the, wow. the actual um uh, actual mgs and set up pig carcasses and had them fire at the pig carcasses and that's wow. why when you watch the movie the, the, you see the way the the body moves mm -hmm. yeah get hit with the right oh yeah that Jeez. they were learning how to animate that by shooting the pig corpses and and yeah. oh, wow yeah. and and they were a little bit scarred by that a couple of them mm. had, a few of them had to have a little bit of uh therapy uh, but mm, um, sure if you if you've ever been around one of those 42s and they light up it's mm. even it's even not even not yep. pointing at you but like just near it you can just hear that mm. and i loved the deep bass when yeah. he's just lighting it up and you just have this and he's when towards the end when he's walking it through the water yeah yeah, mm. yeah. Oh, yeah. which is just you, you don't think that Constable Fusa <clears throat> has like got any kind of real kind of emotional investment in anything else. You know, mm -hmm. he's kind of breaking in a little bit with K, but just not mm -hmm. he otherwise pretty right. flat effect. Mm -hmm. Walking it up to um uh, Henmi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is purposeful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here you know, that's it like comes. I've seen the pictures, <laughs> I know what's going on. And now I'm gonna dance this up to you, so you get your last moments to know what's coming. Yeah, you know, like, oh mm -hmm. boy. Yeah, it is. It is not fun for him. Um, no. no. <laughs> yeah, it's um, and it's one of the weird things about the film is that there is this almost fetishization of the military hardware, while also showing how dehumanized these people are that yeah, use right. this. It's one of the things I love about the movie is that it's it's very dark, it's very serious. Um, it's one of the most dark, serious movies I can think of, but it never turns into nihilism. Yo, know, it, it never turns into none of this matters. It turns into no, like this is terrible. Like this is bad. What's happening to these people? Right. This should not happen. Um, there is you know light and life and goodness. It's just not happening here. <laughs> and for this one guy, it's yeah. just not a it's not a thing. No, absolutely. Um, and it's one of the fascinating things about the movie is that they do present how um, um, he he is clearly traumatized by this. Yeah. Um, you know this 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 girl blowing up in front of him, and how that is you know. As you get to the ending, you realize, oh, this is this cat and mouse game. Yeah, but like he wasn't faking. <laughs> like he was, no. he was definitely seriously messed up by this. 
Um, well, I mean, you see Nanami just look at him and it's yeah. like, oh, there is nobody in the world that would be and, like, and he and he not actually asks by that. Yeah, he actually asks her why. Mm-hmm, you know, yeah. this is like normally they're, they're just supposed to go in there, do their thing, yeah. kill the person, and and be done with yeah. it. Well, and that's the other interesting question: is is he asking her why, or is he asking himself why? Mm. Yes, because he's not sure. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Is I, I think it's it's both. Um, partly because um, I think what's what's also interesting is that um, you know she's a a non combatant, right? He, right? He's trained in these various military uh, you know, scenarios, if you will, or paramilitary scenarios. But it's this a, a girl with a satchel, right? Um, so it just presents very differently than uh, you know, these guys with guns running around. Um, which I think gets very much to the themes of the film, is that, you know, when you try to solve these social problems with big guns, those don't mesh very well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Did you ever, have you guys ever noticed that um, his face is very canine-like? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. It's very Remember canine. Remember the Wolf Brigade? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, his time in the museum, where does he stand? Next to the wolves. Mm-hmm. Next to the wolves. Yeah. His uh, sort of vivid fantasy experience. Wolves. Yeah. Oh, wolves. yeah. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, um, and that's, and, you know, yeah, very Stoshi Cohn. Um, this whole sort of dream sequence as he's, um, you know, seeing, I'll call her the girl because who is it actually? Um, yeah. Uh, getting, getting ripped apart. Um, and what I, one of the things I love about it is that it is very much um, what people report about having experiences of having been severely traumatized, right? right. It, it's, it's this, you have these various images and symbolism kind of being thrown at you by your brain as it's trying to make all these connections. And that it's this very traumatic visual um, of these, these wolves you know, tearing at this person. And they do a great job of making it clear what's happening without, like, you know, showing a shoulder getting ripped off or something along yeah, those lines. Right, they, they, yeah, right, yeah. You get that, that balance there. Did you, anyone else also notice it's somewhat adultificated? Like, there are a few shots where, like, it's it's lingering on her thighs. Yeah, with a wolf's paw between her yeah. legs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... I kind of noticed that but i mean what do you want to dip into freudian kind of <laughs> conceptual sure. elements uh jungian <laughs> dream theory etc i mean he he likens to the wolf as the wolf is consuming her yeah and so the sort of subtext is you see him for a very brief moment like have an actual physical contact with her. Yeah. But it's like, it's almost like a, a dip in his resolve Mm -hmm. because, you know, sort of the red riding hood factor. It's like, you know, you can, you can be so much of a stone wall and then there's that little gap in the armor and then you got to go back. So this, you know, it's like watching that. I'm like, so he's, he's fighting the urge to consume her. And is concerned about consuming her and all the other things that that we find out are interconnected with all of this, where it's just not a simple like, oh, let's be in love and run away. You know, it's like, yeah, easy answer, wouldn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think it gets to the fact that, you know, it's it's complicated, right? Like, yeah, you know, not only is this, you know, is it horrible that this girl killed herself, but also like there's there's a there's a physical attraction there. Right. Like, like, yeah, he found her pretty. Um, yeah. And that also gets tied into everything, right? Well, hence they say, oh, we found someone who looked kind of like her. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, it was more the, the Germanness of the thing. It's like Nanami was, uh, uh, what, what, uh, Kurtz is ha, mm-hmm. short hair. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and K is long as ha, mm-hmm. long hair. Mm-hmm. That's like, gotcha. those are your designations. <laughs> <laughs> Goat caption, the, the pamphlet he gets is the story of Red Riding Hood, obviously. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, who went to Germany for the summer before this film? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put in Neuschwanstein. No, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> stop it. <laughs> um, um, 
Yeah, well, and there's very much this this sense of uh, of well, again, sort of fetishization of the the German. Um, yeah. But yeah, and um, what's also impressive about the film, um, a lot of, and this is not directed by Oshi, I should point out, um, but it is very much in the style of, you know, it's basically a patent labor movie without a, a labor. Um, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and the thing is, um, I, I really appreciate how the movie progresses over time, where it starts with this social unrest, with all of this, um, this stuff, and you, you see... Um, all of these um, uh, protesters and, and the police who responding to them, and so forth and so on. It's kind of a very classic movie moment of right. you know crowds meeting the police and the police don't know what to do and the crowds are kind of overwhelming them. And by the way, I don't know if uh, you guys noticed, no music. Yep. It is stark yeah. for like ten minutes. Yeah. That whole sequence, uh, which really dr- uh, you know drives you and draws you in. Um, and then you know the thing happens. Um, and then it turns into, okay, you know, um, what's going to become of Fuse? And you think that's the movie. Um, th- this guy's, you know, are, are they going to mess with him? Is he going to be um, uh, something bad going to happen? And it should also be noted, um, you know, this thing has happened, and they're like, you get retrained. Yeah. Really? That's all. Okay. Um, and so you think, okay, something more is going on here. Well, you know that with the the meeting of three, where the mm-hmm. their bosses are all kind of sitting around talking, and they're like, yeah. you know, hashing out what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, what part of the city police is doing this, and what kind of intrigue is going on that, and who mm-hmm. are the, the security detail dudes doing, and what's mm-hmm. you know who's in whose pocket. And yep. it's like, so you, you're you seeing Fusei, and it's just like, oh, you're just such a pawn in all this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You're actually not really anybody. No. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's the sad thing about, about Fusei is that, mm-hmm. you know, after you know after the event happens, and he's just running in the yard because that's, mm-hmm. you know, what you do, paramilitary. Yep. And you, you, you that's what you... You train. You, you, you just train. keep training. And you just keep going. And he's just running around and around in a circle. Mm-hmm. And he's just, you know, in, in sort of a, like, like waiting yeah. for orders is mm-hmm. what he's doing. And so then when he goes through the, when he goes through the, uh, the court, the court martial, mm-hmm. which really isn't a court martial. I mean, you <laughs> it's know, more like a, board, the board of inquiry. Really. Where, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And they send him back to be retrained. And, you know, I think that's the part for me where I think that Fusi is, is starting to understand that he has a role to play, mm-hmm. but he's trying to figure out where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. He hasn't really figured it out from his friend yet. He hasn't figured it out from the trainers and, you know, mm-hmm. you, and then as it builds up and then you, you see the interdepartmental, you know, the, the meeting of the, of the, the big guys mm-hmm. and, you yeah. know, later on. And it is just very classical, um, 50s, 60s, early 70s, uh, Japanese government cor- corruption. And it's, you know, one of the things that you see through, throughout the whole movie is just Tokyo being built. Construction. Construction. Yes, mm-hmm. Old things, all things yeah, yeah. All, yeah, old things being knocked down and, and new things going up. And this is during a, t- a period of time where um, the government and corporations are, you know, in the real world, and I'm assuming in this one, are so bankrupt and so corrupt morally, morally um, corrupt, the, yeah. yeah, yeah, morally corrupt, that they that they just kind of have their own rules that they're following, mm-hmm. yeah. and then and then there's this you know this underlying, you know, agenda that they have, and even the police have have this underlying agenda, even yeah. we're trying to, to to keep with with all the th- uh, with all the the, the safety of uh, or yeah. you know patro- policing the the city, mm-hmm. and then. You know, and then you come to realize that they're all just squabbling. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're all just squabbling for power. Well, and, and, and that's the whole thing they talk yeah, about. It's like yeah. you know the the special unit, how mm-hmm. they weren't authorized to do that. They weren't supposed to do supposed that. Supposed to be there, <laughs> right? Stepping right. on the other. It's like you guys are pissing over like territory mm-hmm. and it's, and creating a whole f- big it, thing. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like now you're gonna you're gonna try and get Fuse to be the one to put his head in the noose. Because a girl blew herself up, apparently took out the wall that had the transformers that caused a blackout, mm-hmm. and that was the inconvenient. Yep. 
versus and, and, doing something and preventing that satchel charge from killing a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like you're focusing on like yeah. this when you're not looking at this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which yeah. Steve, by the way, I thought they're running. Fuso is run. Fuse is running down an alleyway with K mm -hmm. at one point. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the alleyway, you can kind of see in a big pink neon sign. I think it says Pachinko. <laughs> 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 I'm looking down there. I'm like. There's Steve's place. <laughs> but, you know, the same yeah. kind of thing. It's like the corruption of the the building contractors and things going on in Tokyo. The above board kind of on the line kind of pachinko kind of deal <laughs> yeah. going on. Is it yeah. gambling? Is it not gambling? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, a really good movie to watch about corporate corruption in Japan is uh, Kira Kurosawa's, uh, what's it called? The bad sleep well. Oh, okay. And it's kind of a, a sort of take on Hamlet, but it, it, it talks about that that corruption. Nice. Cool. And you can't beat a nice Kurosawa film. Exactly. No. No. Um, it has it has your favorite. Toshiro Mufune. Yes. Nice. Yes. In in, in a nineteen fifties hunting outfit. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Wow. I just want him drunk with an oversized samurai sword. <laughs> That's um, a crazy story. Is is that the one is um uh um talked about before, is is that the one with the um uh with like the kidnapping? The bad sleep well? Yeah, the bad sleep well. Is that the one where, where like his daughter is kidnapped or something and it's all about no. Well, it, it's she's involved. Does he have a special set of skills? <laughs> no. Well, it, no. It's it's he. She is. Um, not to get into too much because mm -hmm. then we'll start talking about that movie. Um, she has uh, one, born. Yeah, she's born with one leg shorter than the other. Okay. And so he marries her. Okay. Um, you know, the hero marries her, and it, it's a plot for him to get close to her father, who's kind of the vice president uh, of this company. Who in turn took his father's place? Oh, okay. why it's Hamlet. Mm -hmm. His father's place, who committed suicide. Oh, and so he's getting his revenge on everybody. Gotcha. Okay. So there, there's a oh. point where she kind of plays along with what's going on. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of that in this movie, yeah. actually. Yeah. Of folks playing along with things. Um, yeah. Um, and it's one of the reasons why this is, I think, such a, a, a an interesting movie, because you can absolutely go back and rewatch it and realize kind of what's going on. But at the same time, the movie isn't tricking you. Um, right. You know, it is very much just people. Right. There are people with different motivations and different, you know, on different sides, and you just know this person was on that side, you know, um, which I really appreciate. Well, it's done more like you would expect out of real people. Yeah. Right. We're watching these people engaged <clears throat> in this sort of dance and we have some information, but like real life, we don't have every detail. So we're not yeah. entirely sure. What is Kay? Is she actually the sister? No, she's probably not the sister, but what's her take in this? So it's like yeah. fleshing that out as you get to the end of the film. Yeah. Like, and I really appreciate how, you know, Kay showing up is an anime moment. Right, where yeah. like he 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 goes there to to, to see her see the uh, the girl's ashes. Um, we'll see if I can find that. And um, just happens to run and, into yeah, K. Just happens to run into K. K you know, wearing a a red jacket. Yep. You know all that kind of stuff. And I remember seeing that going, okay, like, like you have to do that. Fair enough. But then to find out later, no, 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 that was planned. Like that was yeah. that was that was a plant. <laughs> Well, so, his his good friend Henry, yeah, yeah, knows his knows who say like the back of his hand. So mm, everything fits so neatly into his plan. Yep. So the first time I saw this movie, I told yeah, and yeah. and I was watching this, and he goes to to the until he went and shot his mouth off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he goes to you know the the place where everyone is is vaulted you know mm -hmm. buried in you know the graves and, and and stuff. When you first see that, you know what it looked like to me, mm -hmm. a hall of records. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I was, I was like, really shoe lockers, <laughs> <laughs> hall of records, works bowling too. shoe lockers. Yeah. 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 And so he's going in there. He's it's okay. In there. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. right. <laughs> Senior, what's what are you doing there? <laughs> So he's he's going in there and he's gotten the information from the from the good friend. Yeah. 
I his say sarcastically. Best buddy. Yeah, his best buddy. Hey, buddy. Anyway, so he comes <laughs> in and and he's and I'm like thinking, oh, he's gonna look up information about yeah. the girl, or whatever. And yeah, yeah he kind of is, but you know. Mm-hmm. And then, and also the first time uh, that I saw this, I really didn't know anything about these kinds of resting places for me. Sure. And, and the fact that you can actually open the vault and put something in. So when mm. she says, oh, I was going to put this in the vault, mm-hmm. and then it's, you know, Little Red Riding Hood, you know, right. the story that, you know, well, she gets them. <clears throat> and, um, and then when she pulled that out, and speaking of, of you know, like, the, the close ties of Germany and, and Japan, mm. pulled that book out, and, you know, I still just kind of to this day I, I still kind of go it's nice to see that they're going with the actual brothers grim kind of yeah. take mm. on it and not the actual saccharine suite that we watch on romper room right yeah when we were kids <laughs> right and um, are you, you know, saying they, the disney-fied versions is not uh, uh no a little no, bit no. not quite not quite you know so and you know when they talk about like as the the movie's going along mm-hmm. they're doing snippets out of, out yeah. of the story. And I, I just thought that was really neat how, how mm-hmm. they did that. And they talk about the initial part about the, the armor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the iron, and then, iron, iron yeah, clothes. Yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah, iron clothes. And, you know, and then kind of comparing, you know, to say to that. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that attracted me to Jinro was that armor that they're wearing. Mm-hmm. Sure. Can you get any more ghoulish? Yep. And terrifying. Oh yeah, you that, can. But... You can, but but yeah, but it's just you know the the it looks like a skeleton coming up, mm-hmm. like you like as if it's rib, rib bones. Yep. And then it's like a skeletal face and these demon eyes, mm-hmm. you know, for low light. Which, by the way, low light fifties. I don't know my tech. My tech. You uh, yeah. You had some infrared vision stuff. The uh, the vampire system that the Germans uh, launched by the end of the war okay. used okay. like an infrared light and a detector to be able to aim things in a in a low light kind of wow. condition. Okay, but the idea of night vision mm-hmm. uh, the the technological capability was probably nascent. So it okay. probably. Yeah. Arguably, okay. if you mm-hmm. focused on it, it would be a little more advanced, but okay. yeah. not quite like that. But then mm-hmm. you probably also wouldn't have had body armor that would have had three dudes with MP40s gunning, gunning at you and it just sort of bouncing off, exercise. and you're not even yeah. and you're not even sort of bounced well, back a tad. <laughs> like, and again, by this point, it's what late '60s, so you know we're getting to like Vietnam era. You know, Which technology potentially. You had better night vision yeah. by then. Starlight, and, right? Yes, yeah. Star not, still not great, but yeah. 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 Well, and and, and, he, and we see that, like when the, that the, that moment when he switches it on, it's all grainy. Like, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of a mess. It's tough to see what's going on. Yeah. And the one sort of levity moment, which isn't really supposed to be levity, but I still laughed at it because I'm just, you know, I had to just laugh at something. Sick, yeah, sick man. Sure. <laughs> It was in the training exercises when they get hit with the bullets. Oh, yes. oh yeah, the rubber know, bullets. <laughs> the rubber bullet, right? And and the two guys who who fail the exercise and are at the bottom of the stairwell, and the one just like holds up his hands like that, yep. and the trainer's just like, no, 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 that's not how this works. And then they're just like there, and they shoot them again just for <laughs> measure. Yeah, no, that that was absolutely moment of levity, like. You, you, you screwed up. You're going to learn, yeah. son. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> Which, I mean, it, it's absolutely true. When he says at the end, he's like, you learn with your body. You know that it's going to hurt. So you try to avoid pain by not dying. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yep. yeah, go yep. figure that. Um, Which, again, gets to this whole, this whole theme of, you know, you are physically traumatizing people to carry out these things. And what does that do to people? Yeah. Um. Um, I also like the fact that, um, you know, we see Fusei kind of emotionless and we see the other guys in a very similar state after that exercise. Um, yeah. Just reinforcing the fact that, yeah, like this is kind of breaking them down. Um, which, again, is what you have to do if you're trying to do this kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's an interesting film because you get, I mean, you know, the conversation between Henmi and the instructor goes on for like three and a half hours. You know, they're just sitting yeah. there talking about all this kind of stuff. And it's very much one of those things where 
if, like me, if, if you if you're not into it and you want the mo something to actually happen, it just grinds forever when you realize that this is a movie about that. And also it's a movie about, um, like a lot of live action Japanese films, um, most people aren't saying exactly what they mean. Right, right. And yeah. there are subtexts to every line. If somebody doesn't answer something, that means something. Um, and there's a lot of that going on here where folks are kind of, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, changing the topic of conversation suddenly. Yeah. They're doing all that kind of stuff. And so it's, it's, it's fun to kind of read that and go, oh, that's, that, that was an indelicate question. A lot of dramatic pausing. Mm -hmm. And so we have some other... <laughs> 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 ha ha. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and getting back to your point, Steve, I, I love that, that moment with the, uh, the, the destroyed building. Um, and about how, and this is very much what was happening in Japan all the time, things getting torn down and built back up. Um, and uh, just it's just gone. Nothing yeah. you can do about it. Um, Which honestly, when she was saying that, I'm looking at the at the pile of stuff mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, um, you realize that's just an abandoned lot and people just dump a trash on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> but then I dialed back in. I'm like, no, no, no. We're making a point by this statement. Yes. It's not the actual <laughs> visual of just like trash. It's mm -hmm. the point of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is actually an interesting thing. Um, so, actually, in this scene when he's talking with her, um, I had kind of a Satoshi Kone moment where I was like, ooh, if this is directed by Satoshi Kone, you wouldn't be sure if she was real. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, did he go to the cemetery and see a girl who looks exactly like her, and now he's hanging out with this girl, right? Like, that wow. would be a great extra layer to put on all of this stuff. Um, His psychosis is so kooky. Right, <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh, um, boy. And, you know, no one really interacts with them. Um, yeah. You know, no one really sees she's there. Um, and so um, I think that would have been, been a great, you know, tack to take, but obviously that's not what they're going for here. <laughs> and then suddenly he becomes an idol. Yeah. <laughs> Dresses up. Oh. <laughs> and then he becomes a spider. <laughs> oh, <laughs> spider idol. <laughs> oh, cool. I'm a spider, so what? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Hey. Okay. Um, I'm still enjoying it. Oh, cool. So, oh, cool. Shoot. Yes. One second. It's still quite fun. One sec. I accidentally clicked the wrong thing. There we go. And fade to black. And fade to black. <laughs> Come on. There we are. Unfortunately, with this way of doing things, sometimes if I go too far, it closes the video, which isn't very helpful for oh. us. Oh, exactly. Um, so yeah, and and actually, I think one of the great examples of, of how the movie is kind of settled and quiet is when Kay gets the phone call. Um, yeah. Because you have no idea what that right, means. Right. She just says hi, yep. hi, and then lays down. It's not until you go back to the movie later on that you realize, oh, this is, you know. She's receiving right. That's the call to get the that, Yes. Yeah, they're receiving the orders and she's and as she gets that phone call, that's one of the beauty of the uh, beautiful scenes in the movie is that it's just no dialogue really. Yeah. And it's just her just like <sighs> here we go. Final chapter. Here yeah. Because yeah, yeah. she knows very likely there's a good chance she's gonna die on this. Yeah. Right. Like clearly they don't intend that to happen but it's 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 very likely um or a good chance of it um but i mean you you look at you know um nanami mm. she as a runner yeah ended yep. up dying anyway mm -hmm. and yep. k is also a runner mm -hmm. yep. so you know what i mean it's like even beyond this controversy and what's going on here and her being hired in to do whatever she's to do mm -hmm. The likelihood is, if she had resumed her operations with the with the People's Democratic Front or whatever mm -hmm. it is, yeah, that she would have ended up dying yeah. anyway. anyway. So it's just like, yeah, do you go out right, like, kind well, of doing something, something, or do you mm -hmm. go out just pulling a satchel charge in a sewer? Right. I think it's the um, People's Front of Japan. So, or is that the 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 the, the, the Democratic People of Japan or the the Japan's Democratic Front? Or it's the well, they gave the for the anyway. Nanami yeah. that she started as the like Japanese student, yeah, democracy, mm -hmm. uh, 
organization mm -hmm. and then she got expelled and then she joined like the red front and then she joined something else and then ended <laughs> up with whatever. so so here's an interesting thing about that in real life mm. is that during the student turmoils in the 60s and the 70s um these organizations were actual student body organizations at the university so when you when you went to these universities if you happen to have one of these political parties like I think there was one at Tokyo University where mm. if you were a student, you were automatically enrolled in the party, in the student party. And they actually oh. took money from you automatically. <laughs> and like it was like a shakedown. Uh -huh. And and so you were on whether or not you actually did anything with them, mm -hmm. you were considered to be part of this because as as I, this is gonna sound really weird, but just as like students they were like actually became very political and fighting against the university from hiking up tuition score uh, you mm -hmm. know things like that and they were getting kind of violent about it so oh you yeah can imagine that, yeah and, and if you can yeah. imagine that today with you're gonna shut down ethnomusicology now to arms to arms mm -hmm. but that's basically yeah. what it was except for you know broader issues so when she's going through that process of mm -hmm. okay i was this so she was in a legitimate organization mm -hmm. that had leftist ties that went into a and she got expelled as a result of some action she probably did right and then she went into these other organizations and became part of was it the sect mm -hmm. and then yes she became, the sect, and, then, yeah. and then she became a runner you know you know a gun runner basically yeah, yeah. exactly um we call them munitions no mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's and it's crazy, and and to be clear, like the student protests of the sixties and seventies, like they they were violent. Like we're talking, yeah. And look them up; the, the photographs are, are amazing. I mean, it's literally college students throwing Molotov cocktails at police. In in fact, to that point, something I wanted to bring up: um, that whole opening ten minutes or so is a very accurate representation yeah. of the student riots at the time. Um, yeah. You know, um, besides just like, um, and it's one of the great things about the film is you know you. Um, you have those kind of um, recreated photographs, but this really puts you into it. It makes you feel what that was like uh, on both sides, because you have you know the, the students protesting, all the police going, "The hell? Like, what's going on here? Like this is this is right. not what we're yeah. this is not what we're used to dealing with. Not what we're trained to deal with. Like, how do you respond to this?" Um, well, it's, that's brought up by by Fuse's you know superior there. Yeah. It's just like you know they're they're just trying to maintain order yeah. <laughs> yeah they're not trying to oppress anybody they're not mm. trying to suppress anybody they're just trying to maintain order and like everything's gone insane all yeah. these different departments are to each other the yeah. the sect is doing all this stuff and it's just mm. getting out of hand yeah and it's yeah. like very much so um, um it reminded me of the series uh hyoka mm. where it's mm, the students um of like the <clears throat> newspaper uh club or whatever mm. they find some sort of cryptic information about things that had happened with like their parents uh. and it it is kind of like the result of the student protests and the student uh, riots mm -hmm. people trying to basically bury their involvement uh, so it was kind of like a yeah. mystery kind of mm -hmm. thing where it's like why is this picture in this thing why does it, why are these people mm -hmm. doing Oh my gosh! They were all involved <laughs> in the student protests, all in the riots, and they buried their their connections so they could go on and have a life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. And if you've seen from up on Puppy Hill, um, not yet. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the middle school students in there, and it's set in the like early '60s. Um, the students in there are just starting to like meet and talk about how we don't think this thing in the school is fair and we should do something about that right and then going to their teachers and talking about that and um it was something that you know their prior generations would never have done um and it's that stepping stone like that that is what led to those later things what and it grew into those later things um it's fascinating um so yeah um and then you know as if things hadn't spiraled out of control enough they spiral even further out of control um as Fuse realizes what's going on um, and goes all Jack Ryan on their ass. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and again, speaking of, of, of so many things, you, you, you see Fuse coming up the stairs and seeing the guy coming the opposite direction. Yeah. No dialogue. But it's like, hmm, what's he doing down there? 
you know. And he goes into his room, finds the envelope. You don't see the photographs, which I appreciate. Yeah. You just see, oh, those are the two. Oh, oh, so he, oh. Yeah, yeah he just put well, it Well, I also find it really interesting that Fusei doesn't, I mean, this is a person that you are, his name is the only name on the two lockers in that room. So he's the only person in that room. He sees somebody who we don't know whether he knows them or doesn't. Yeah. And he doesn't immediately say, who are you? What are you doing? Right. He doesn't go into the room, find the pictures, and then turn around and go, who was that? Mm -hmm. And then run down the stairs trying to nab this dude. Yeah. No. He's just totally cool with it and just looks at the pictures, pictures down. Mm -hmm. Like, Wow. Well, yeah. what they were, what they were, you know, what the trainer was doing to him was isolating. Mm -hmm. It was isolating, but, you know, yeah. Fusei. I mean, because everyone else, because if you notice, you know, like when he goes back and retraining, he's sitting by the washing machine, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. the other trainees are. We we need another person for for the match and for Masha. They, uh, yeah, and yeah. they look at him, and he's just like, you know, just, <laughs> yeah, just staring off into like you know whatever nice this there. season. And they're like, ah, forget him. Mm -hmm. But he's purposely being um, isolated, mm -hmm. you know, for the trainer to get him to be part of the, the Wolf Brigade. And as he's, uh, you know, so when he, when that moment happens where he comes up and you see the guy walk away, and as, as you point out, he, he kind of really just knows what's going on. Because the immediate yeah. thing he does is, is look for what it is that mm -hmm. is left yeah. behind. Yeah. And, and, you know, and he gets it, and he finds it. Like we all say, you know, okay, he he makes his decision, and he. I think that's the first moment that he actually becomes happy. Mm -hmm. He has action. He has a direction, yep. and he yeah, knows he has, where he has way purpose to go. And something. Mm -hmm. and, 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 on, yeah. and you see him how he leaves after he gets mm -hmm. the phone yeah. call. Like everything is just executed perfectly. He, sh mm -hmm. he shimmies. Yep. And he, he shakes down the down, down the drain pipe. He's able to clear the fence and go. Yeah, holy the wire, cow! You yeah. know, the, right? The I was thinking of motion when he gets up to the top and just flips, flips over the over. top. I'm like, wow! Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I, I was spent thinking, some time doing that one, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, let's draw that quickly. <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, I was, as I watched that, I was, I'm like, God, if I did that, I'd probably totally gut myself. On a, on a, <laughs> just, just totally biff it. Mm -hmm. Well, but, I, yeah. I would think most people would throw their jacket. Over right, the right. He, he just said, and then no, kind of go over. Just, Hell no, no. he's just doesn't need pure it. physicality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, exactly. Wow. But but this is the mission that he knows. This is yep. the mission yeah. that uh, he's he's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. He knows what how how he's how what the process and everything he does for the next few minutes as he's meeting up, mm -hmm. you know, to be killed. He knows he's supposed to be killed or or not killed but captured. Yeah knows all this so he knows everything that's going on and as you put it he's jack ryan to everybody mm -hmm. and he just walked in there but everything is calculated he knows what he's doing this is what he was trained to do and this is mm -hmm. what the trainer is looking for yeah right. the trainer is looking for him to do this mm -hmm. to get the girl because that was the actual mission yep mm -hmm. was to get her mm -hmm. away she from was them. the insurance mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And then when when the you know at the end or towards the end when they suit him up, he's just at that point he's just stone cold. He, he's yep. just like yeah, mm -hmm. That's he, it. he had that look. He had that look on his face. Goes yep, ready for a damn murder. Mm -hmm. Yep, pretty much. Um, he's just doing the thing. Um, Let's go killing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's what's so sad about the movie in, in many ways is that as I say later on he chose the pack you know right. he, he chose this life this experience and as dehumanizing as it is he's like this is this is what I'm, I'm gonna do because I found like my, my people so to speak um, which of course over to the whole you know that's what they say about terrorism right you know, like that, right. Right. that's an experience there too um, in fact I remember earlier on um, uh, somebody says uh that's what they uh, say about anime fans. Yeah. But, Wait. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that uh, no. you know, this is their perspective, and this this is how they think, and we think differently. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, our way yeah. of killing is okay. <laughs> exactly. Their yes. way of uh -huh. killing right. is not okay. Exactly, yeah. But you're both killing. There's a great... 
um, episode of New Doctor Who called the the Zygon Inversion, um, and uh, where there is a it, it's it's Al Qaeda. They, they they basically set up a a Doctor Who version of of all that where there are um, there's this alien race of shapeshifters who have all migrated or many of whom have migrated to Earth, um, and they're all living on Earth hidden. Um, but the powers that be discover that some of them want to take over the world. Uh, and there's this small percentage of them in the UK that want to take over the world. And so, of course, folks want to, you know, round up all of them, you know, and put them in camps and all that kind of stuff. And this war starts escalating. Um, and the, the, the few who, who want to take over the world, um, they're instigating and doing all sorts of stuff. And it, it builds up to this um, confrontation where the doctor manages to get the leader of the terrorists and the leader of the UK Special Forces group that is trying to fight them facing each other with the potential to kill each other. And long story short, you know, um, um, starts to sort of mentally break down what they're actually doing and what the consequences of what they're actually doing. And there's this line where he says, um, um, when you press that button, whatever it is, to start the war, you never know who's going to die and whose children are going to burn screaming. Wow. Yeah. And it's like, mm, you know, and it's kind of what Damn. they're doing here is that, you know, you set up these organizations for very rational, understandable reasons, but then things happen. You know, there are consequences yeah. of all that um, on the people and on society. Um, because, you know, this whole climax where he goes off to kind of hit, get his revenge and take down all of these people, and by this point, you're like, yeah, 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 rah, rah, rah. Um, you also, you know, realize by the end that by doing this, he's now cleared the way for them to kill her because now she's the only missing link. Um, and it's like, that's, that's what you did. Um... And it's, I had held out hope for a little bit that they would be like, okay, now she's going to be on our side. We'll retrain her, and uh -huh. she'll be part of the pack. And yeah. it's just like, then then his superior talks about a wolf can't be a human. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, no. Oh, well, when the, <laughs> oh, no. You know, when the guy pulls out the pistol and cocks it and starts walking over to her, I was like, oh, no. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, again, notably, I should also point out, he puts the gun in the person, in, in Fusei's hand, and says something that I did not expect him to say, which is, pull the trigger and end it all. It, yeah. It's a double message. It really Choose. is. Yeah. Choose. It's either Choose her or you. Kill yourself. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do like the way, in the animation mm -hmm. style, yeah. when he put the, the C-96 in his hand... Mm -hmm. It, the animation was done with weight. Yes. Yeah. So that exactly that sh mm -hmm. shot you show there, the handle hitting his hand mm -hmm. causes just the amount of weight mm -hmm. that you would get if somebody had slapped a piece of wooden steel into your hand. Yep. I was like, wow. Yep. A lot of tension to so, nice so, details. So, yep. like somebody that. studied weapons and all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, I mean, it has to be stated, you know. When push comes to shove, he actually finally has an emotional reaction in real life. Yeah. You know, everything up to this point has been just dreams and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And now suddenly he just can't stand it. He can't do it. Um, and it's Which so kind of weird. makes you wonder. He's already traumatized yep. by having watched Nanami blow herself up. Mm -hmm. And it's like where he has this emotional reaction with, with K. Yeah. Is this really what they wanted out of him? Right, and and you know that, I, mean? and I, I, it's I like... believe that is absolutely deliberately a, a filmic choice because no, he doesn't shoot her. Right, right. They have to have the the sniper basically take her take yeah. her out, and I'm like, right. here's the thing: he's gonna know he didn't shoot her. Yeah, like he he is very aware of firearms, whether he pulled the trigger and all that kind of stuff. Even yeah. if he's not processing in the moment that he his team that killed her. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, you know, and again, wheels within wheels. It's like. You think you have this all figured out. <laughs> yeah. But, well, I just you know. it just imagine him being... He's obviously been, like, kind of whacked out by the explosion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I could just 
now he's it all the, the coffer dam that has held back yeah. his emotional state as it kind of burst open. Yeah. Have you have you completed the sacrifice of Constable mm-hmm. Fuse? Mm-hmm. So that now afterwards he is going to be he, he's not going to be stable enough to do the things you need him to do. Mm-hmm. But he is rendered relatively harmless mm-hmm. because his psychosis will maybe not make him a crazy maniac. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is the Stay thing. Stay tuned for part two. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I totally. I, I I think that the filmmakers are are very much making that point that um, they may have created a killing machine here that's going to turn on them. Um, because remember, he just killed his best friend too. Yep. Right. And so he's processing that. And not um, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, hey, buddy. Super, super <laughs> kill him. <laughs> and it's another one of the fascinating things about this is that um, you have this moment, you, you have, um, you know, in, in other movies, if Hollywood were trying to make this, there would be a moment in which the Wolf Brigade was back into a corner where, you know, they were facing some threat they couldn't handle and they're, you know, you, you need to to um, have that moment of crisis to come back from. They are invincible in this movie. Um, yes, yeah, I would have thought the sewer combat with all the people coming down, which is kind of funny because the guys coming down in the sewer yeah. are using 9mm MP40s. Okay. And the team, the Wolf Brigade team, he has his MG42, which is using a full-sized 8mm round. Mm. And all of his teammates are using an FG42, which is a full shim Jaeger, shortened sort of version with a 20-round box magazine of the same full-sized 8mm rounds. Oh, wow. Okay. So (laughs) we're talking somebody with a 9mm, which would hit you... And stay in you okay. versus somebody who's firing a weapon at you that is a full metal jacket that will pass through you, the person behind you, and into the third person along the way. Wow. So it's like the mm-hmm. Wolf Brigade is not when you think, oh, they're just, you know, look at them. They're just playing clothes. And they're going down there. No, they're oh, carrying serious heavy <laughs> weapon <laughs> where the people on the other end are not going to come out good on this at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just love how he has his little revolver, and I'm and you know his P thirty eight. Yeah, yeah, you know, and he's <laughs> and, and he's just like, you know, he knows he's gonna die, but he's just got, I guess one last shot and ricochets mm-hmm. off the shoulder. I'm just like, yeah. I'm just like going, why did you even bother? Mm-hmm. You, you know what? There, there was actually a better use for that, and just to mm-hmm. you know take it away from Fuse to be able to. Well, what Henry you know, pulls at the end when he falls down the the waterfall there in the sewer. Mm-hmm. He loses his P-38. The last thing he oh, fires okay. is a Leucht pistol. Okay. Which, at the end of the war, the Germans had taken... A Leucht pistol is a, is a flare gun. Ah, uh, okay. Given that the Germans, you know, anything will work if you can do something. <laughs> yeah. They literally fit, like, a small bazooka-style round oh, wow. to go into okay. a Dude, flare same. gun yeah. so mm-hmm. that you could run up within, like, 10 meters, I don't know, of an armored vehicle and go... And then... Mm die <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so when he fires that thing and it goes mm. Boo! yes they're like horribly inaccurate <laughs> and even at 10 meters and he's like yeah. a good 30 meters away from maybe i don't know but yeah. it's just like <laughs> yeah. i'm like wow that was stupid <laughs> <laughs> well and again it was that that you know and it, it gets to the fact that i think you know from henry's perspective it's like well i could do nothing or i could go out in a blaze of glory Right, um, and so I might as well fire and at least see if I can do some damage. Actually, he the reason why Fusi walked a walked the the chain of fire up to him mm-hmm. was because Henne dropped out of the special forces because he couldn't right. take being hit mm-hmm. with the oh, training bullets. Right. And this is Fusi going. Yeah. Here's your fear. Here it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Mm-hmm. There you go. I'm delivering the hurt. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there are a lot of animes that I adore the deep bass, like hard, harmonious kind of. Whoa. I loved 
that sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously, what's yeah. going on is horrifying. But <laughs> right, <laughs> whoever whoever did the work on you know the weightiness of things, yeah. who did the work on the sound mm -hmm. on this, just well nailed that sense of like kind of guttural mm -hmm. psychological trauma of that thing. Yeah, it's like a truck engine. Yeah, uh, it's just crazy. Um, Deep and r harmonically just tough mm -hmm. to deal with was like, oh boy, that's yeah. man. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and what I also appreciate is how they 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 do things like you know if you or I tried to fire that gun, you know, <laughs> yeah, and he's just, oh. burr, burr, you know, there's some training. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the study of it as well is interesting using because what he's holding is a bipod, so that the the bipods for the the thirty four and the forty two, they had a clip where it would be it would look a little stick so that you could run with it and it would just kind of swing around, mm -hmm. and then you'd pop the clip and it would pop open as a bipod so that you could put the barrel down mm -hmm. and that it would give you kind of a you know at least a reasonably stable mm -hmm. position to sort of swing back and forth with. Mm -hmm. So, I've seen photos of actual people from during the war actually holding on to the bipod like he's doing wow to stabilize it and it requires you to force you're forcing the front end down as much as you're yeah, trying to like, yeah. hold it to mm -hmm. keep it from left right shift but you're really just yeah. pushing that thing down because of the muzzle is just <laughs> rising on it. yeah so you know fuse is the demand's strong, to say the least. I mean, yeah. the equipment that he's got on, guy's strong. Mm -hmm. The way yeah. he flipped the fence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is yeah. a beast. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, taking out those guys to, to, to convince you the fact that he's not an Arnold Schwarzenegger beefy. Yeah. He's a skilled, you know, can do all the things. Um, also, I want to call out the fact that, um, you know, those... Oops, um, those red eye things are impossibly difficult to animate because they are a separate visual element that you have to superimpose onto the cell. Oh. Which means for every, sh every frame, you have to separately superimpose that. And in low light, remember where the eyes are as oh, it's yeah. moving along. Like they, they said when they did original Gundam and the, 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 the mono eyes on the Zakus, it was just incredibly painful going back and trying to redo all those, or, you know, um, uh, trying to get all of those exactly positioned was horrific. Right. So, top notch there. Um, speaking of which, I want to talk a little bit about, about the animation. Um, yeah. I think, and again, I'm, I, I don't know, but it sure looks to me like a whole lot of this movie is rotoscoped. Um, and people usually hate rotoscoping. But the, the way the characters move in this, the way you know, move, uh, uh, clothes flap around, the right. way all that happens, really feels rotoscope. <laughs> but for a movie that is so grounded, that is meant to be this alternate history and that is about such weighty subjects, I think it really works. And they do a great job. I think they, they, they chose character designs that work well with that kind of approach. Right. Um, because you're not trying to match, you know, giant anime eyes to rotoscoping all that kind of stuff. Um, so well, just take Flowers of Evil, and like put it like right next to this. Yeah. Not <laughs> stylistically, <laughs> the way that they made these characters, even if you rotoscoped it, mm -hmm. they worked with the lines and the yeah. movement and the shading and made it as a sort of secondary thought yeah. where it's, uh, is this rotoscope or not? Versus something like Flowers of Evil where you're like, oh, just stop! <laughs> well, it's clear they used, exactly what you say, it's clear they used the rotoscoping for reference, right? Like, right. we need to get this motion correct, so we're going to get the lines to that, but we're not going to match, you know, right. line to line, frame to frame, right. everything. Uh, yeah, look at Only Yesterday, where they did some rotoscoping there, and there's moments where it's like, oh, that... The lines of that person's face are popping in and out every three frames. Like, uh, yeah. um, you don't really feel it here. So, top notch there. Um, I love the cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were cool. I love the cars. The Mercedes. I, I, I'm trying to figure out what there was a, the, there was a Fiat in there as well, one of the mm -hmm. people had, and the VWs. Oh, yeah. Oh, VW. Bugs all over the place, yeah. 
Um, where was the? There we go. Yeah, there's a. Uh, there's definitely a love for classic cars in this in this movie, I think. Yeah, is that a Fiat? Yeah. Or I couldn't have yeah, It looks like a Fiat to me, but uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's 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 fascinating. Um, and and Matt, you're absolutely right in the in the chat. Um, you know, the Suicide Bomber has that moment of regret right after she pulls the pin. Uh, yeah. He's there just for that second, of realizing ah, uh, mm. um, but it's just enough to to get there. Um, oh, haven't seen Mugen Train yet. Damn yeah. Uh, yeah. See, this, is the, this is the thing when you don't have a delay. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you could, if you had a five second delay, you went, zip, went, no. Mm. <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> like, mm. yeah. nope. Yep, yep, yep. Um, it's, yeah. Um, it's, it's a fascinating uh, Anything else we want to talk about? About Jinro the Wolf again? Glad it's I, had heard, interesting. I, yeah. I had heard a rumor a couple times over the years, and I don't, and I honestly don't know if this is true or not. Mm. But that Jinro is supposed to be a three part, so that the the, the uh, light novels were supposed to be part one, mm. the anime is part two, and there was supposed to be a live action okay. as a sequel to the oh, anime. Interesting. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, uh, but that's just something you hear off and on. There is a live action version of the anime. Which is meh. There's yeah. also a live action Korean version, which we've yeah. mentioned before, which is set um, in a, a um, a version of Korea where North and South are like I think like trying to remerge, and there's all this tension, and so the Wolf Brigade is dealing with the tensions between North and South Korea. Ho oh, oh. So oh, I, I've wow. not seen that. But it's on Netflix if you want to check it out. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and apparently, like, it, it was literally, like, the Koreans going, oh, can we please adapt this for us? Like, this, yes. Like, this is a thing we can, that totally works for us. And it, is, it was very deliberately, you know, these, you know, this <laughs> concept adapts to the Korean situation very closely and was, was meant to kind of be that, that thing. I wonder if it was ever shown in North Korea. <laughs> Probably not. Um... Uh, no. <laughs> Short answer, no. no. <laughs> Long, longer answer, hell no. no. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's a fascinating film. Yeah, like I mentioned, I I can understand. I, some people just bounce off it because it is very slow. There are these long conversation scenes that don't seem to go anywhere, um, where it's just you know, bureaucrats talking, and it is the tough thing. Like, and I think going back to this movie, knowing what I know about Japan now, makes it a lot more interesting. If you yeah. don't know the history, if you're not familiar with, oh, this is 60s Japan, oh, that, you know, if it's just, it's another country, um, it doesn't have the same impact. Um, well, but, I keep getting flashes of Ghost in the Shell. Oh, yeah, totally. You know what I mean? It's just like when there's the helicopter kind of, oh, totally. yeah. Yeah, 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 over yeah. the city, I'm like. The shot of the canal with a boat in the canal. Well, yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm like, uh -huh. is Major Kusanagi somewhere right here? <laughs> like, well, so they, they are public security. You know, like, they're yeah. literally public security. So. Well, was, you know, yeah. that was, so I thought that was kind of funny because it's like, well, cool, okay. Yeah. So I think I think if you if you also use that lens kind of thing, it like it makes the sort of slow bureaucratic talking like a little less tedious mm -hmm. because Ghost in the Shell does plenty of that. Oh, oh yes, yes. yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, Aramaki loves that was his that was like stereo out of the movie. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> getting some uh, feedback here. What? Yeah. Uh, interesting. So Matt said there, there was a live action before Jinro called Kerbera Saga. Interesting. Mm. Um, interesting. Interesting. So yeah, there's uh, and I'm you know it's one of those things. I'm sure there were every franchise has lots of plans that don't meet fruition. So. Yeah, um, I'm sure there are plans for sequels and and, and such, um, but yeah. Anything else on Jinro? Oh, stuff. Oh. Watch it. Color. Yeah. Color. I, I wanted to point out how drab this movie is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, purposely. Even, well, purposely, definitely. <laughs> um, but even then, like you know, you have this imagery of the the uh, the Red Riding Hood, and even with that, like that is not a bright red. Oh. Um, you know, they very deliberately desaturated this movie dramatically. Uh, well, how about his training scene where you just you yeah. flat flat by, or even in that the the border review, 
Yeah. There is evidently sunlight. Yeah. There is nothing bright. Mm-hmm. It's like the entire thing is – it's like there's a cloud cover. Yeah. Over the entirety of the whole entire a bit of Tokyo that it's just like you get this diffuse white light, but you mm-hmm. don't have any direct sunlight. Yep. And, I mean, there's shadow lines, and yet it's not bright. <laughs> <laughs> like, how are you doing that? Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, After the war, the sun lost uh, luminescence, <laughs> yeah. and it's only one third of its normal brightness. Yeah, like, oh wow! Um, <laughs> and I just I always love when a movie or when any any work you know um, um, pays attention to, to that aspect of the other visuals of saying, right. "Oh, because I mean that takes time, right? It takes effort to figure out how are we gonna what, how, what our colors gonna look like." And like I've yeah. seen cells from this; it's not like they slapped a filter over it. This was their you know these were their paints; these were their tones. Really wow. impressive. Yep. So cool. That is Jinro, the Wolf Brigade. Um, and so we are going to be back in just a few minutes to talk about anime news and other stuff. We will see you in a moment. <laughs> 